Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Today we're doing something that's a bit uh, not ham radio related, but it will give you a better understanding of how radio frequencies get around and is a really cool demonstration for how radio frequencies work and what we can do with them. To get started, you don't need a lot. This is an inexpensive project. So without further ado, let's kick things off. To receive NOAA satellites, all you're gonna need is an SDR receiver. I like the SDR Play RSP1 for this, something simple, but you can use like the more inexpensive Nualec SDR USB dongles. I did a video not too long ago about making the antenna for this project, which features two pieces of copper tubing and a 3D printed base. And then I used a UHF connector for going to my coax and then I just needed to get it down with a converter to SMA. And that's pretty much all you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna need a computer because we are gonna be taking that received RF audio tone and turning it into an image that you'll be able to see. And in particular, these are images of the satellites flying overhead taking pictures of Earth and the weather patterns. And these are just live for you to pick up uh, whenever there's one overhead, and I'll talk about that as well because we're using special software that knows when the NOAA satellites are passing overhead and does a lot of the heavy lifting as far as receiving the signals and converting them goes. The primary piece of software that makes this all work is something called WX2Image. It is long since out of publication, it's no longer being developed, but there is another website that has the full software and they kind of kick it along as new operating systems are upgraded. Assuming you have an SDR that works with your computer, you have the drivers installed and you are using an SDR decoding software or receiving software of your choosing, pretty much any of the software will work for this so long as it can output some kind of audio um, to some kind of audio device. And we're gonna be using a virtual audio cable that will allow you to transfer from one application to another application, that audio that you're picking up. Before you do this whole undertaking, I posted links in my Amazon store to the new Alec SDR dongle, very inexpensive dongle for receiving NOAA satellites, as well as pretty much anything that's on the upper handband side of the spectrum, so like two meters, 440, it's really good for that. I'm using an SDR Play RSP1A that I purchased from Ham Radio Outlet. Uh, very good SDR. That would be a step up, particularly if you wanna like receive HF in the future, I'd go that route. I'll also be posting a link to SDR software that you can use with the new Alec specifically. So these are all free software and you're gonna pick one based off of which operating system you have. Okay, don't worry, this is an easy thing to get started with and have a lot of fun doing. It's not hard, it'll take a little bit to set up the software if you're you know, getting started with it, but once you have it set up, it's just so easy to go outside, turn the SDR on, and start receiving, so long as you have your antenna and your SDR and all that stuff sorted out. So let's hop over to the computer. I'll show you what I'm do what I'm what I'm doing what I'm setting up. In fact, I've got it set up right there now, um, and then we'll go outside and we'll run some satellite contacts. See if we can get that those downlinked images. So our journey to NOAA image decoding begins with WX to IMG. So you're going to Google that, which we already have, and we're looking for WX to IMG restored. And this is the group that is keeping WX to image going. And again, this is kind of a defunct title, but it works so well, we keep using it. Uh, note while you're looking at this, make this a copy, full name, Kevin Schutman, and then whatever email address, but this upgrade key and the full name, you need that to activate the software. So after you've done that, go to downloads, and we're going to want the beta version. Uh, so if you click on latest beta versions, you want Windows beta version, which is the one that will work with Windows 10. So download for Windows. It's a very, very light program and install it. Now hopefully the install should complete and that's usually where people run into problems that this install won't continue and it did, so we're good. So the next thing you need to do is you need to get a virtual audio cable. And in this case, I use VB Audio, which is the one I've been using for a long time. 
So you want to download this as well. And what this will basically do is allow you to connect any software to any other software, which is great for this because we need to feed the SDR image or the SDR data, the audio data into WX2 image. So after you get this installed, remember, go to download and install it. We can then cut over to our SDR software. The next thing we need to do is run SDR Uno, which is my SDR software. Again, you could use your own SDR software. This doesn't matter. And this is particularly for the setup to output the audio. So to do that, if you're in SDR Uno, go to settings and you want to go to out. And instead of speakers high, you want to select your VB audio cable, which is going to be in here somewhere. There it is, cable input. So you would select that. So once you have that set, you're going to go now to WX to image, and you're going to be running this for the first time. Right off the bat, we want to go to your location, Los Angeles, country, United States. Of course, insert your own area here and uh, try to to get to a local big city so that you can find it but you do absolutely want to do this correctly because it's not going to work if you don't have your lat long uh, connected correctly uh, we're going to skip over the gps for now so we're going to go ahead and enter our key which is kevin shookman we're going to enter the upgrade key And we'll put in at gmail.com. Okay, we should now have error. Kepler's, okay. So now that we have it registered, it's going to say Kepler's are 2,500 days out of date for NOAA 18. So we're going to want to update Kepler's. And that basically gives you pointing information. So under file, you're going to go to upload Kepler's. It's going to go ahead and update. And then it's going to start telling you, okay, your next pass is NOAA 15. It will be on 137.620 megahertz. The UTC time right now is 0 to uh, 0 03 hours. And this is saying it's 0 03 36 hours. So we're about an hour, and it says right there, record in an hour and 32 minutes. So that's kind of how you use this to track where the next satellites are. And that's just going to show you the next upcoming satellite if you wanted to see a whole list then you would go to satellite pass list and you could set this for however how many days let's just do one day and so we can print this out oh where did it go we can print this out but it'll tell you noah 15 15 18 19 15 18 19 and you can say okay so uh right here is the times so we had one that already passed uh, the next one is going to be, oh, this is local time, sorry. So we had one that already passed a couple of minutes ago. We have another one that's in that hour and 36 minutes. And it gives you an estimate on duration. So it, at eight minutes and or eight minutes and 59 seconds, it's probably not the highest pass versus this 11 minute one, that's a pretty over the head pass. All these are pretty good passes. So these are these are some pretty good passes that we can expect. And then it gives you the expected frequency. Now, I'm not going to run you through the automated process for this because uh, that's something we can do in a future video. Or you could go off and do it yourself. That takes another process. But really, all you have to do at this point, so if we are going back to the SDR software, we'll click off of this guy somewhere. Just click around a little bit. So what did it say? It says the next pass is at 137.6200. So if we go to bands, ham upper, what's the closest one? Two meters, and then we'll go enter. And then we can just go down from here. All right, so now you're just gonna key in the frequency, 137 and 6200, check that out. And yes, 137.620. So to get your recording set up, go to options, down to recording options. Make sure your cable output is the VB audio virtual cable. This is going to pull in the audio from the SDR. Change your sample rate to 22050, and you're going to do receiver baud rate of, I wrote this down, of 57600. 
And that's pretty much all you have to do if you're not going to do automatic control. If you did automatic control, then you would need to change your uh, type to match the receiver you're using if you wanted WX to image to control your radio. Hop back over to your SDR, and if you can, uh, I leave it in WFM. 60k for the filter to get a decent decode something i like to have turned on under enhancements is you want to have the msa multi-spectral analysis turned on and that's pretty much all the enhancements i use under options make sure you disconnect resync you don't want resync on and you want to have show all clicked and that is all you need to do on the option side and that's pretty much it once you have your frequency set 137620 for the next pass which matches you're then going to turn your SDR on then go after the SDR is on then go to file record on WX to image and you want to note record and auto process create images just click that button and hit auto record that sets the tool in this hourglass wait mode. If you ho if you hover over it, you know it's it's only this application, and this application is waiting to deplete this timer of one hour and twenty four minutes. Once it does that, it will start pulling in audio from the audio source, and you'll see it riding up from the top like that as it's decoding the image, and you will see it on your SDR on the band scope on the wave on the waterfall there. You'll see exactly the data come in if you have a viewable pass or you have data that you're receiving from the satellite. Then that's pretty much all there is to it. Once you have it working, you don't want to touch it. You don't want to do anything. It'll actually stop recording on its own, so you don't even have to go in there. But if you did want to stop it, you could go in here and go stop. OK, hopefully you have your software set up, ready to run with the SDR software of your choice. I will recommend, if you're going to pick up an SDR, you don't have one yet, a new Alec SDR USB dongle is a good option. I prefer the SDR Play devices as they go all the way down to the HF frequencies. Disadvantage with that is it, it costs a lot more to go into that. You're looking at about $100, if not more, if you want to start stepping up the SDR Play line, which I have a video on the SDR RSPDX, which I, I really like. Um, but with that said, I'm using an RSP1A and that works perfectly fine. All right, let's drag this whole thing outside and see if we can grab a couple of images off of a passing satellite. All right, we're about one minute for the pass to start. The WX2 image software knows when the pass is going to begin and it's, a, it's an ascending pass, meaning it's going from the south up to the north. And what I'm looking for is activity on the waterfall. It's starting to come in. I can see it on my SDR, and we're getting the uh, the pass right now. It's happening. So the waterfall is showing kind of like a salt and pepper lines. Like it almost looks like really dense Morse code going from the top to bottom, and that's the actual data that we're receiving from the satellite. Forty-four percent through, like and that. it's such a, a nice. Once you get this done right, you can just sit down and enjoy a little pizza. It's a nice day outside. It is a nice day outside. Hey. It's, it's got George here. We're doing a little pepperoni and anchovy. We are about 92% through the pass. It's starting to like fade away. I'm assuming that's because we've got a, a wall right here behind the back side of the antenna. This is the north facing, or this is going north. So we're losing whatever that image would have picked up. If I had maybe moved things, doesn't really matter though, it's still gonna have problems. Okay, 99%, what the software is now gonna do is post-process all the data. And we see it live, which is, it's pretty cool the way it works. So we got all that raw data, uh, raw image data. It's going to basically make three or four different images from it. Okay, so we've got a couple of overlays. So from that, we get audio files, which was, this was today. We got saved images. These are the ones from today across here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Once you get it set up to run automatic, 
You'll get some cool saved images out of different things you've captured on given passes. Now, the software doesn't know how good your antenna is or where it's positioned, so if you are in a bad position or you're affected by uh, some buildings around me, like the, the north side of my home is blocking where this antenna is at right now, that will affect your receive side. But it's still gonna run for the full duration of the pass, so just assume that you may lose some of that upper portion or lower portion, depending on where it's at. So hopefully you have found this video helpful. Maybe you have a couple of images that you pulled off of the NOAA satellites. That would be awesome. If you did, do me a favor. Join our Facebook page for the Ham Radio Crash Course and post some of those images. I'd like to see what you guys did. Post a picture of your antenna, your computer setup, and whatever images you were able to pull down. I think that would be really fun and hopefully get the word out to some more people. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have not already, please subscribe. I stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time which is 0100 UTC time. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I'll talk to you again soon. See ya. Don't touch anything over there, okay? Oh my God, immediately when I start, the satellite comes overhead, the kids swarm in. I'm trying to make a video. <laughs>